I call this video a four-dimensional perspective on Bible translations, and it should become clear why as we proceed. Many of you have seen charts like this one, which show different translations arranged uh, in terms of how literal or loose and free they are. I'm looking to develop a new method to characterize an English translations, and rather than focus on the literalness, I want to compare them to different Greek texts to give us a sense for the basis of the translator's textual choices. So this is the contents of the video. I'll outline the approach, and then I'll show you the results and make a few observations, not very deep ones, at the very end. These are the Greek New Testaments that we'll be talking about. Westcott and Hort, which has been demonized quite a lot in literature and in YouTube videos over the years. It focuses on readings from Vaticanus and Sinaiticus. It was published in 1881. The Nestle Elan 28th edition, which came out in 2012, which is only slightly different in its text from the 27th and 26th editions. So the text essentially has been fairly constant since the late 1970s. The Tyndall House Greek New Testament, which is a new critical edition published in 2017 by Tyndall House. It was done by evangelical scholars. The Nestle Land is done by, by scholars in Germany who may or may not be believers. But the Tyndall House is done by believers, as was Robinson Pierpont's Byzantine text form which presents the readings from the majority of extant manuscripts. Most of them are relatively late. Uh, it was published in 2005. These are the English New Testament translations I'm evaluating in this video. There are 26 of them. Some of them you may, may not be very familiar with, like DBH is David Bentley Hart's translation. I'll be doing a review of that at some point in the future. Uh, DRB is Dewey Reams Bible, EHV is the recently published Evangelical Heritage Version, EMTV is uh, Paul Esposito's English Majority Text Version. All right, so how did I score these translations? I looked at 153 translatable variant readings in the Greek New Testament. 50 of those are ones that I had used in previous videos, so if you go back and look at my ASV versus ESV, or KJV versus ESV videos, or NRSV versus ESV videos. You'll see a lot of those there. The final 103 I selected by looking at the United Bible Society's 5th edition apparatus. For each variant, I translated the readings as they appear in each Greek New Testament. WH is West Cotton Hort, NA28 is Nestle and Lawn 28th edition, THGNT is Tyndall House, RP is Robinson Pierpont. For my benefit, to make it easier to score, I highlighted the key differences, and then I compared the passage in each English translation to my translation of each of the four Greek New Testaments. Agreement scored the translation one point, disagreement zero. I was keeping all of this in a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, which I used to keep score. This and the next chart show the 153 verses that contain the variants. So here's the second chart. All right, so what are the results? Well, first I examined the different uh, Greek New Testaments to see how they agreed with each other in those 153 locations. West Cotton Horde agreed with NA28 56.2% of the time. West Cotton Horde agreed with Tyndall House 43.8%. Westcott and Hort agreed with Robinson Pierpont 14.4% of the time. Nestle and Lon 28th edition agreed with Tyndall House 49% of the time. Nestle and Lon 28 agreed with Robinson Pierpont 40.5% of the time. And I'd just like to draw your attention to that difference there. Westcott and Hort agreed with Robinson P Pierpont 14.4% of the time, but in the same passages, Nestle and Lon agreed with Robinson Pierpont over, well, almost three times as frequently. So Nestle Aland 28th edition is not the same thing as West Cotton Hort. You may hear things like that on the internet, but it's simply not true. NA28 is a distinct 
Greek New Testament from Westcott and Hort. Then finally, Tyndall House Greek New Testament agreed with Robinson Pierpont, 58.8%, quite a lot more than Nestle and Hahn. The evangelical scholars behind Tyndall House seem more favorable to Byzantine readings than the Nestle and Hahn 28th edition does, which in turn is more favorable to Byzantine readings than Westcott and Hort was. Now, these are agreements in meanings when translated into English. Actual agreement rates are probably somewhat lower because they would disagree over spelling, they could disagree over word order, there may be articles that aren't uh, translatable that are or are not present in each Greek New Testament. So this is their agreement rate in English when translated into English. Okay, the first set of results we'll, we'll show are like this. They are um, simple bar charts. I have the English translations arranged on the x-axis. You'll see their labels at the bottom of the screen. And the percent agreement with Westcott and Hort is shown. So notice that the revised version and the American Standard Version, I have their labels circled at the bottom and arrows pointed toward the column at the top. They're sometimes said to be translated from Westcott and Hort. They agree with Westcott and Hort only about 60% of the time. Now you look here at these four translations on the left of the screen. As is to be expected, the translations that are based on the Textus Receptus, the majority text, and the patriarchal text of 1904-1912, we might call those the traditional text translations, they seldom agree with Westcott and Hort. Their agreement rates are similar to the Westcott and Hort Robinson Pierpont agreement percentage we saw on an earlier chart, which was about 14.4%. The uh, highest agreement rates with Westcott and Hort are for the 1977 and 1995 New American Standard Bibles. 75.8 and 70 percent respectively. Notice that the earlier NASB agrees with Westcott and Hort more frequently than the more modern NASB does. Most modern English translations agree with Westcott and Hort about 55 percent of the time, so they disagree with Westcott and Hort 45 percent of the time. Percent agreement with Westcott and Hort for the Dewey Reams Bible, the Roman Catholic uh, Latin-based Dewey Reams Bible is 37.3 percent. All right, now let's look to the next set. This is percent agreement with Nestle Lon 28th edition. You read the chart the same way that we read it earlier. Here the uh, y-axis, the one that's vertical on your screen, starts at 30 percent. That's because there's much more agreement with Nestle Elan 28th edition across the board, across the 26 translations, than there was for Westcott and Hort. The two translations that agree with Nestle Elan 28th edition most frequently are the Southern Baptist Christian Standard Bible at 88.9% and the Roman Catholic New American Bible at 90.9%. The English Standard Version now, there's no difference in the 153 instances I looked at, at the 153 variants, between the 2016 and 2001 editions. The ESV agrees with Nestle Elan 28 only 73.2% of the time. The ESV's introduction says they're based on NA28, the 2016 edition does, but this shows this low agreement rate shows that the translators made independent textual decisions. The same can be said for the 2011 NIV, which has a 68% agreement rate with Nestle Elan. It says it's based on the latest editions of Nestle Elan United Bible Society's Greek New Testament. In 2011, when the NIV was published, the latest Greek New Testament in that family was NA27. NA27 is very similar to NA28. It differs from it, I think, in only 33 instances, and all of those are in the Catholic epistles. 
All right, um, if we look at our four traditional text translations, they have higher levels of agreement with NA28 than with Westcott and Hort. That makes sense, since NA28 itself agrees with Robinson Pierpont 40.5% of the time, and Robinson Pierpont is a Byzantine slash majority slash traditional text Greek New Testament. In other words, the NA28 includes more Byzantine readings than West Cotton Hort does. That's the point we made earlier. Now we're going to shift to percentage agreement with the Tyndall House Greek New Testament. Notice that the y-axis now runs from 40 to 75 percent. So the agreement um, range amongst the 26 English translations is fairly narrow here. Nothing much above 70 percent, nothing much below 45 percent. It's remarkable to me that the two translations that agree with Tyndall House most frequently were published well over 100 years earlier. The Revised Version New Testament was published in 1881, the American Standard Version New Testament in 1901, and the Tyndall House just a couple of years ago. Of course, there's no causal connection there, as far as I know. The translations based on the Textus Receptus, the majority text, and the patriarchal text have higher agreement rates with Tyndall House than with NA28, and that reflects the fact that NA28 agrees with Robinson Pierpoint 40.5% of the time, while Tyndall House agrees with Robinson Pierpoint 58.8% of the time. So we're comparing these traditional text English translations to a Greek New Testament that has more traditional text content. content. And so you would expect the agreement rates to be higher. Tyndall House is perhaps too new to be a source text for a translation into English, but evangelicals, I think, might welcome such a translation. Tyndall House unlike West Cotton Hort, was produced by believers. And it's based on a Greek New Testament produced in the 19th century by Samuel Petra Gellis, not uh, by West Cotton Hort. So it has a different uh, lineage to it. Now let's stop and take a look at, well, shift gears and take a look at Robinson Pierpont. Here the uh, axis, the vertical axis, runs from 20 to 100%, so you have a very fairly wide range of agreement uh, levels amongst the 26 translations. Not surprisingly, the three translations with the highest rates of agreement with West Cotton Hort have the lowest rates of agreement with Robinson Pierpont. So you see there in the lower left, I have circled the two New American Standard Bible editions, 77 and 95, along with David Bentley Hart's translation. The uh, King James Version and the New King James Version, the two Textus Receptus translations, differ from Robinson Pierpont only 11 times out of the 153. Four of those disagreements occur in the Book of Revelation, where there is a varied text base in the uh, Byzantine tradition. The Eastern Orthodox Bible differs from Robinson Pierpont 10 times out of 153. Agreement rate is 93.5%. The Eastern Orthodox Bible was translated from the patriarchal texts of 1904-1912, also known as the Antoniades text. This is sort of a majority text, Textus Receptus blend. I think it agrees with the majority text more often than it does with the Textus Receptus. The Paul Esposito English Majority Text version has the highest rate of agreement with Robinson Pierpont. It disagreed with it, in my count, only four times out of 153 for a 97.4% agreement rate. The Evangelical Heritage version, that's the recent conservative Lutheran translation. I did a review on that a few weeks back. Its high rate of agreement with Robinson Pierpont reflects the uh, translator's eclectic approach. They were willing to diverge from the modern critical editions. The Dewey Reams Bible's high rate of agreement with Robinson Pierpont suggests to me that Jerome had access to texts with Byzantine readings, which was not improbable in the 4th century, or that such readings crept into the Vulgate over the centuries. The remaining translations Everything else that you see there, 
to the left of Dewey Reams. They have agreement rates um, below 50%. So this is the raw data. These are the actual scores and percentage for the different translations. They're in no particular order. This is, I think, the order in which I scored them. So this is the first page for each translation. Say, look at American Standard Version, the second row. It had an agreement rate with West Cotton Horde of 57.5%, with Nestle Elan 28th edition with of 49.7%. American Standard Version agreed with the Tyndall House Greek New Testament 69.3% of the time, and with Robinson Pierpont 45.8% of the time. So that's how to read this chart. The next one continues with the final set of translations. And now let me say a few words about scatter plots. We live in a three-dimensional world, so it's easy for us to draw a two-dimensional scatter plot, an XY plot on a flat piece of paper. If we lived in a five-dimensional world, we could plot each translation's four data points on a four-dimensional piece of paper, and wouldn't that be nice? Uh, but unfortunately, we can't do it. Here, we can draw 3D scatter plots, and I've kind of tried to suggest what one of those would look like to the right. You can draw those on a 2D surface, but if you're like me, you find those very hard to read. It's hard to judge exactly where that point floating out in space intersects the different planes. So I chose to make 2D scattered plots. Each axis represents the percent agreement with a particular Greek New Testament. There are four Greek New Testaments. The 2D scattered plot means I'm choosing two of those Greek New Testaments to display at a time. That means, if you look there at the mathematics, that means there are six of them. That's easy to show to, for yourself as well. I've decided to show three, and that's based on the way they ended up displaying when I looked at them. You could just see them more easily this way. The data labels, which I attached in Excel, and Excel doesn't give you a lot of flexibility in moving them around. I was able to move them about uh, in such a way that I could distinguish the different data points. So these I chose from the perspective of displayability. The first one I'll show is this Nestle Elan 28th versus Robinson Pierpont. So the translations that appear highest on the chart are those that agree most frequently with Nestle Elan 28th edition. They have the highest agreement rates. As you move farther down the chart, down towards the x-axis, those, those translations have lower agreement rates with Nestle Elan 28th. A similar thing happens left to right. Translations farther to the left on the chart have a little agreement with Robinson Pierpont, so their, their Byzantine content is lower. As you move to the right, you have higher uh, Byzantine content, and you see the four translations there in the lower right hand corner. Those are our traditional text translations. Notice that all of the translations agree with Robinson Pierpont at least about 30% of the time. Almost all of them are right of that 30% line. And with Nestle Elan 28th edition, almost 40% of the time. The majority text translations, as I mentioned, they group nicely at the lower right hand portion of the plot. The eclectic evangelical heritage version and the Latin-based Dewey Reims Bible show strong agreement with the Byzantine text form, but they follow Nestle and Lon 28th readings with moderate frequency also, like 50 to 60 percent of the time. Most modern translations follow the Byzantine readings less than about 50 percent of the time. Apart from the Revised Standard Version 2nd Catholic Edition, that's a modification of the Revised Standard Version uh, that was done in about 2006, I think. More modern versions in the Revised Standard Version family show more agreement with NA28, but little change in Byzantine selection rates. So in terms of left-right on the chart, all those that I have circled are pretty much in the same general area, 35 to 45 percent agreement with Robinson Pierpont. But over time, from 1946 to 1971 to 2016 and 1986, over time, the uh, general trend has been increasing rates for the Revised Standard Version.
You see something similar for the NIV. The NIV 84 is lower on the chart than the NIV 11. So NIV has more NA28 content now than it did earlier. The 77 New American Standard Bible has less in Nestle Elan 28th edition content than the 95 does. And the same thing for the NEB REB pair. These uh, REB is a is a revision done in the 1980s of the NEB, which is a 1960s translation. Although it's modest, there's also a movement towards increasing NA28 content there as well. Similarly, the Byzantine content in the Jerusalem Bible family of translations has remained nearly constant over the years, while the textual choices in the direction of the Nestle Elan 28th edition have become more common. Now again, understand me, I do, do not, um, I realize that Jerusalem Bible, New Jerusalem Bible translators did not have the NA28 available to them, but I'm looking at translation choices made in the direction of NA28 regardless of the time. And another thing you can do with these uh, charts is plot where the two Greek New Testaments that you did not use as your axes fall on the plot. So here, these two points, the red stars, represent hypothetical translations, English translations, that agree with the Westcott and Horat and Tyndall House, respectively, 100% of the time in the 153 verses scored. So if you had an English translation based entirely on Westcott and Hort in those 153 verses, its agreement with Robinson Pierpont is around 14%. That's why it's off the left-hand edge of the plot. Whereas uh, an English translation that agreed 100% of the time with Tyndall House would have like a 58% agreement with Robinson Pierpont and 44% agreement with Nestle Elan. So that's why the red star with THGNT beside it is placed where it is. Another XY scatter plot here is West Cotton Hort and Robinson Pierpont. Now notice the axis at the bottom. It starts at 30% and goes up to 50%. I could have plotted a broader range there, but I didn't for a reason. The translations that agree with the Byzantine text form most frequently are to the right, while those that follow Westcott and Hort's preferred readings most frequently appear towards the top. I've clipped the traditional text, text tra translations, the King James Version, the New King James, the English Majority Text Version, Eastern Orthodox Bible, along with the Evangelical Heritage Version and the Dewey Reams off the chart. I did so to zoom in on the translations in the center. Otherwise, the labels would have overlapped. I tried it. They were just too crowded in there. and You couldn't make sense of it. So I had to clip off. I had to, to zoom in on the translations in the center to make the chart useful. Now, some interesting things here. The two translations that agree most frequently with Westcott and Hort are editions of the New American Standard Bible. We saw that earlier. For the New American Standard, the NEB, REB pair, NIV, and RSV family of translations, there's been a general trend towards lower West Cotton Hort agreement rates over the years. You see the way I've got the arrows pointing there. The exception is the 1946 Revised Standard Version agrees with West Cotton Hort less often than the 1971 Revised Standard Version does. Modern English translations agree with Westcott and Hort less than about 60% of the time. All right, now here's our final XY scatter plot. This, this chart shows the Nestle Elan 28th edition on the Y or vertical axis and Westcott and Hort along the X axis at the bottom. Notice the ranges as well. The Y axis is running from 30 to 100. The X axis is running from 10 to 80. That seemed to be the optimum way of allowing us to see all the translations and zoom in far enough to be able to keep the labels distinct. The chart shows translations that agree with Nestle Elan 28 most, most frequently near the top, and those that agree with Westcott and Hort more often towards the right. I did not need here to clip off any translations. The traditional text translations are grouped together. They have relatively low rates of agreement with Westcott and Hort on the order of 
the somewhat higher rates of agreement with Nestle Aland, about 40%. The eclectic evangelical heritage version and the Dewey Reams Bible again appear to be grouped together, separated from both the traditional text translations and the others. Now my use of the word constellation here is I think really appropriate because this is something like looking at the night sky. You look at the stars and they group into these constellations, but those stars could be light years different in terms of how distant they are from you. They might be farther apart than the translations that appear to be farther apart when you look left or right. So you really do need to look at multiple of these XY scatter plots to make a draw a conclusion about closeness. All of the translations in this moderate West Cotton Hort low NA28 cluster that I have circled there date before 1990. I don't know why they group there. It could be entirely random. The uh, New American Standard Bible NIV and the RAB NEB pair they show a tendency to decrease agreement with Wescon Hort and to increase agreement with Nestle Elan 28 over time. It's the same kind of phenomenon that we've seen earlier. The same is true in a general sense of the Revised Standard Version family of translations. Although the de decrease in rates of agreement with Westcott and Hort has been mild, Hypothetical translations based on Robinson Pierpont and the Tyndall House Greek New Testament would appear here on the chart as indicated. So here are my observations. The uh, Nestle Elan 28th edition and the Tyndall House Greek New Testament are moder modern critical editions of the Greek New Testament, but they are not clones of Westcott and Hort. In A28 agrees with West Cotton Hort only 56.2% of the time in the 153 verses I looked at. Tyndall House agrees with it even less often, 43.8% of the time. Most modern English versions are not based on West Cotton Hort, but most agree with West Cotton Hort less than 62% of the time in those 153 verses. Apart from the translations that work with a Byzantine base text, the translators generally act as independent textual critics. They do not automatically follow the critical text themselves. Instead, they choose from among the variant readings listed in the apparatus. The Byzantine text base has fewer such choices, so it makes sense that those would be grouped more closely. As a general trend, as, translators, as translations are revised, they agree with West Cotton Hort less often and with NA28 more often. I think that's natural. NA28 and NA27 and NA26 have very, very similar texts. They've been around since the 1970s and they've exerted certain influence on the translators. The traditional text-based translations have high rates of agreement with Robinson Pierpont and with each other, and this is the point I made just a moment ago. The diversity seen in the other translations, the ones that aren't based on the traditional text, is due to the variety of readings in the older witnesses. The traditional text translators have fewer such options, except maybe in the Book of Revelation, from which to choose. Those who claim that modern translations of Catholic should explain why they differ so much from the Dewey Reims Bible. Future work. So I'm not sure that 150 samples is large enough. Uh, it may be enough to distinguish and show the general trends amongst the translations, but it may not be a large enough sample to give you an accurate sense for the level of agreement with the Greek New Testaments. You know, it may be actually 95% instead of 90%, or 73 instead of 68. I may replace some of the variants. Uh, there are perhaps half a dozen of the ones that I use that after I scored a number of translations, some of which were loose translations, it occurred to me that those uh, distinctions could have been lost. So I may have misscored on half a dozen or so uh, data points because of that.
I may um, add translations over time. Uh, a few have been suggested to me, like the Lexham like English Bible and the Berean Study Bible. Also, I understand that the Nicholas King translation is fairly popular in England. And then there is the New Living Translation. My concern about that is that it may just be too loose to score properly because the translators may take too many liberties for me to actually be able to compare the English translation to the Greek. Well, that's all I have. Um, I hope you found this uh, interesting and uh, maybe useful. It certainly is a different way of sorting out the translations. I want to caution you to consider that the uh, scores here are not indicative of the value of the translation. Just because a translation has a high score on its Robinson Pierpont or its NA28 agreement level, it doesn't mean that it's a better or worse translation. It's just a way of characterizing it. Thanks very much for watching.